Good morning, y'all. Um, hope you're doing well. I wanted to take y'all through something that um, was impressed on my heart this past week out of Luke chapter 8. Um, it's, a, it's a really awesome story that um, kind of shows just the uniting power of the gospel and um, really how the gospel has no real cultural or religious or really any boundaries to who it can impact and who it um, who it really cares for and, and, and Jesus especially, what, what his concern was for for the church and for who's in the church has no boundaries and it doesn't have really any cultural uh, parameters for it. And so if, you're, if you've got a Bible, if you're reading this, um, flip over to Luke chapter 8. Um, Luke chapter 8, essentially what we see here is Jesus has been doing ministry for a little while. He's been healing people. He's been speaking and teaching. And um, Luke leads us, after healing a demon, he leads him back um, from, what, from the place where he was at. And he, as he's coming into the city... It says that he runs into two people. Um, one is Jairus, and then one is this other woman that we don't, we never know her name, um, which is appropriate when you consider some things. So um, anyway, so what, what you're looking at is as he walks into this town, as he's um, walking in, it, Jairus approaches him. Now Jairus is an interesting character. He, um, he's a, so what we know about Jairus is a couple things. Um, he's a religious official, so um, he works in the synagogue. He's probably a pretty high up religious official, Pharisee of some sort, meaning like he was sort of the religious and cultural elite of the day. Like he would have been a guy that people looked to with authority. Um, he would have been a guy that didn't need people much. He had almost everything he needed provided for him. Um, pretty high up on the totem pole. And so what, what happens is he kind of enters the scene and the first thing we see of Jairus is it says that he falls down at Jesus's feet. Right, um, Jesus wasn't overly popular with the religious elite of the day. So if you look at, at how they react to him, they don't like that he's able to do the things he does. They don't like that he's able to um, really show and exhibit the power of the, the power of God in, in his teaching and in his healing. Um, they don't like the following that he has. They think that it's detracting, especially from a religious like Jewish religious elite perspective. I think it's retracting from their power and their influence. He's not really liked by these guys. Um, and so for Jairus to show up and be one of those people who's generally judging Jesus, probably has at least said some negative things about Jesus in the past, um, and then his first reaction to be fall at Jesus' feet means that he, it's really like a, a giant symbol of a couple things. One, like pretty giant symbol of just how desperate he is, that, that even... And we haven't even gotten to what, what, why he fell at Jesus' feet, but how desperate he is and what, what's driving there. And then two, a giant symbol that really Jesus, at this point for him, is maybe his last resort. Um, and and he's, he's sort of out of options and, and has, because of, because of being out of options, has, has forced himself really to be dependent on Christ. And so what he says, he says it falls at Jesus' feet and, and he's asking for Jesus to go save his 12-year-old daughter. And man... Um, maybe three or four years ago, I, I would have got like, okay, yeah, like he loves his daughter and wants Jesus to 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 heal her. And all we know is that she's dying. Um, he's tried everything there is to try, and nothing's worked. And now he's sort of left with one option, and that's Jesus. And so he fell at Jesus' feet. But I can tell you now, having a two and a half year old and um, another little girl on the way, gosh, there's nothing and nobody that I wouldn't bow before if it meant even healing her from a cold, much less dying, right? And so I completely get that Jairus is on his knees here, begging for the life of his daughter. And even if it seems silly to all of his friends or it seems blasphemous to all of his friends, I can see how he doesn't care at all what they think. He's just trying to heal his daughter. And I completely get that, um, how he would sort of thrown off of the social norms and thrown off the social taboo to fall at Jesus' feet. But we're, again, we're talking about a religious elite dude, somebody in the upper class um, who would have been judgmental and would have been um, probably somebody who made fun of or at least talked negatively about Jesus now falling at Jesus' feet. And so, Jesus, of course, Jesus responds like, yeah, let's go, let's go handle your daughter. But when he's on his way to, to go heal Jairus' daughter, he gets stopped. And so if I'm Jairus, I'm like, man, really? Like, you, we, my daughter's dying, and you're and you're going to stop to tend to something else. And and I think that's the important note of this story is he gets stopped. So on his way, it says that a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years, um, and as as 
you know, has been ceremonially religious unclean for 12 years, has not stopped bleeding. Like, incredible amount of hemorrhaging, has seen physicians, can't get it fixed. Um, and so it says that this woman who would have been the exact opposite of Jairus, right? Um, in, in Jewish culture, blood was an indication of unclean, of being unclean and, and being sort of, you, like if, you're, if you touch blood or if you're bleeding, like there's a purification process you have to go through to ever be like sort of brought back into the Jewish religious society. Um, for her to bleed for 12 years and it not stop would have made her not only the opposite of Jairus, would have made her le legitimately untouchable. Like if you touched her, you would have been religiously and ceremonially unclean and would have had to go on and be purified. So like she's the other end of the scale from Jairus, like as far different as she could be. I'm talking about a woman that um, hasn't been allowed to be a part of cul the culture and religion and ceremony of the day for 12 years. She has been um, an outcast for 12 years. And so she's, she's like sort of hiding behind Jesus and reaches out and touches his cloak is what it says. And it says the moment she touches his cloak, she's healed. Right, like it, it immediately healed. Now I think there's a couple interesting things there. It wasn't actually the act of touching the coat that saved her. So don't get that like she like her action saved her. No, because Jesus would later go on to say, "Hey, woman, it, it is your faith that has made you well. Go in peace." It wasn't her action of touching. It was her faith in Jesus that He could heal by touching um, that made her well. It wasn't. It wasn't her actual action. It was her faith and. Um, and I think it's also interesting that what healed the untouchable woman was him, or was her touching Jesus. So there was a, there was, there's a notion there that Jesus sort of debunks the religious and ceremonial ideas of the day that, that she was unclean and untouchable. He, she literally had to touch Jesus to be healed. And so there, so in theory, that would have made Jesus religiously unclean, which is sort of an oxymoron, right? Um, he's, he's the son of God. He, he can't be unclean. And so um, he touched her. She's healed. Um, he stops the crowd and it's like, hey, who touched me? Peter gets a little annoyed. Classic Peter. Like, what do you mean somebody touched you? There's a lot of people around you. Of course somebody touched you. And he's like, no, somebody touched me with the intention of being healed. He obviously knew who it was. He was giving the woman the opportunity to, to, to reveal herself. And what, look at her reaction. It says that she did what? The exact same thing as Jairus. Fell at his feet. She fell down at Jesus' feet in the same way that Jairus, religious elite, fell down at Jesus' feet. That is a, just a massive statement of the gospel, right? That no matter your culture, your class, your, your, your religious affiliation prior to, no matter who you are, what you've done, man, fall at the feet of Jesus. Exhibit faith and you will be saved. Like, I can't, I can't overemphasize enough how important it is that both massive, like, Really popular, really important dude, really not. Massive difference in, in the spectrum. Both fall at Jesus' feet and are, and are, are given what, you know, what they're asking for by faith. And, um, and so I sort of gave the, the one-liner there. Essentially, he eventually goes to Jairus' house. He's been yelled at already and told that his daughter's dead. He says, no, he's not dead. She's just sleeping. Everybody laughs at Jesus. Jesus walks in with with Peter and James and John and mom and dad, and, and he just literally grabs Jairus' daughter's hand and says, arise. Um, and she gets up from the bed, and he said, first thing, I love this, this is, uh, thank you, Luke, for giving this. First thing he says is like, hey, get this girl something to eat, right? That's what, that's what I'm talking about, right? You, you've been out, you've been, you've, you're dead, you come back to life, it's first thing, like, hey, man, like, get her a hamburger, you know? Um, it's, it's kind of funny to me. But um, I think that the important thing to notice here, guys, is that on the one hand, you have... Somebody who um, the culture would have said deserved to be, to be helped by Jesus. Jairus is um, important. He's at least culturally important. He carries a lot of weight in the religious um, culture of the day. He would have been um, powerful and popular. And then you got, on the other hand, you have this, this other woman who not only would have been none of those things, she would have been untouchable. She would have been pushed out to the fringes of society would not have been allowed to touch people or hang out with people or any of those things. And, and yet, in both instances, they fell in Jesus' feet with faith that he could be the healer for their lives, um, that the gospel took away the cultural 
issues, took away the cultural difference, and united them on one thing, Christ, right? His healing, saving power. Um, I'm not going to get too in-depth there, but if that's not a message for the political and cultural stance we're in right now in the United States, I, I don't know what is. That It doesn't matter the difference. It doesn't matter the political or, or circumstantial difference, that, and whether you believe one thing or believe not another, whether your neighbors like our new president or don't like our new president, whether you like our president, whatever, the gospel doesn't care. <laughs> the gospel unites. The gospel brings people who are as different as they can be together under one banner. Um, it unites. And in that unity, we see a, a harmony and a compassion and a, a, a we see a church that works for the goodness of the gospel, that works together for the goodness of other people, that works together to care for and lead out Christ's ministry, right? Um, this was liter literally two opposites, right? That did one thing and they both fell at the feet of Jesus. Um, I, I, this is my prayer for our country right now, that um, we would fall at the feet of Jesus and, and let the unity of the gospel help solve some of our differences um, and let the unity of the gospel bring us together so that we can do good things in the name of Christ and of the, and of the glory of God um, together instead of, I mean, Jairus, Jairus is now, he literally made himself equal with a woman that was as far different as it could have been from her. Um, I think there's a lesson for us right now, especially to see that Jairus fell at, at the feet of Jesus and this woman fell at the feet of Jesus and in their falling before Jesus and their recognition that his power and their humility um, they were healed, and it was their faith that made them well. So um, take that for what you want. I would, tell, I would tell you go back and read the whole chapter of Luke 8 to really get some context for that. You could also look back in Matthew and Mark, the same, same account is there to really get a full picture. But um, gosh, if there isn't a really clear picture there of how the gospel just breaks down social and societal walls and unites everybody around Jesus, I don't know what is. So love you guys. Talk to you next week.